Good day everyone. So my topic for today is about on how to gather data for your thesis or capstone project. The next step after choosing a topic for your thesis and making sure it is crisp and re ready is gathering data. In this article or discussion, we will focus on how to effectively collect theoretical and empirical data. Collecting theoretical data. At this point in your academic life, you are already acquainted with the ways of finding potential references. Some obvious sources of theoretical material are journals, libraries, and online databases. Of course, like Google Scholar, ERIC, or Scopus, or take a look at the available list of academic search engine. Nevertheless, there are some hidden methods that can help you get the most out of your sources. Search for thesis or capstone on your topic. This can help you see what other approaches have been taken and in what aspects they focus on. In addition, pay close attention to the list of references and follow the breadcrumbs back to the original theories and specialized authors. Both of these tips will help you gain a better insight into your topic or proposal. Another option is reading through content sharing platforms. Many people or researchers share their papers and writings on these sites. You can either hand sources get some inspiration for your own work or even learn new angles of your title or topic. The more you know, the better. The guide on how to undertake a literature search and review for dissertation and final year's projects will give you all the tools needed for finding literature. So if you wanted, you just simply visit the library.dmu.ac.uk or some popular content sharing sites are Medium, ISSUU, Calameo, Scribe, and SlideShare. With these sites, you have to check the credibility of the sources. You can usually rely on the content, but we recommend to double check just to be sure. Take a look at your guide on what are credible or credible, credible sources. Before I were going to continue, I just want to give you a credible sources and what are they and how to identify them. Sources that are up to date. Make sure that the sources you use are not too old or out of date. There might be a more recent paper with new and better insights on your title or topic. Research papers, books, and articles that are written by well-respected authors. If an author had a good reputation and is well-known in their field, it is highly likely that the source can be trusted. Sources that you find at your own university's library or your college library. In general, sources that you find at your college universities, college or university's library are credible, be it books, scholarly journals, articles, music recordings or DVDs, but be aware that the college or your college and university's library can also have popular media, which may not be a credible source of information. Sources from online scholarly databases. Online library databases are probably one of the best sources of articles from scholarly journals to which you will have access. Your library will most likely be subscribed to multiple online databases and provide information on how to access them. Credible online scholarly databases are also Listed, no? I will give you PubMed, Web of Science, Scopus, GSTOR or Gestor, 
Cyrus Mag and Eric. Yan. So, as what I mentioned earlier. So, PubMed, Web of Science, Scopus, of course. We are all, uh, all researchers are looking forward to uh, Scopus Index, their research, actually. Government websites. Websites that end with .gov, .edu, .ac are generally considered as credible sources. So, actually, a lot of example, for example, in other country, no? Reliable website are the World Factbook, Science.gov, the National Bureau of Economic Research. Of course, in UK, they have UK Office for National Statistics, we have Philippine Office for National Statistics, and for US, Census Bureau. Another credible sources are the sources from newspaper. Again, uh, maybe you are not familiar with the acronym of a newspaper. Newspaper is an acronym. It stands for news or uh, newspaper is North, East, West for news, South. Then a paper stands for past and present events reports. That is newspaper. So, for example, in the Philippines, we have Manila Bulletin. Of course, we had uh, the Philippine Star, Daily Inquirer. But in other country, no, they have the Economist, Bloomberg, the New, the New York Times, Politico, the Wall Street Journal. Again, sources from social networks, blogs, and sites like YouTube or Vimeo. With these sources, it really depends if they are credible or not. They may or may not be highly biased, insufficiently researched, and not well written. These sources should be checked thoroughly before being used in an academic paper. Again, sources from social networks, blogs, and sites must be checked thoroughly before being used in an academic paper. This will be some frequently asked questions about credible sources. How do you recognize a credible source? Again, a credible source is usually written by authors with a good reputation. It is up to date and can be accessed through your college university or university's library. What define a credible source? A credible source is defined as an unbiased and supported academic reference written by well-known researchers. What are some examples of credible sources? Again, some examples of credible sources are research articles from any of the following journals. PubMed, Web of Science, Scopus, GSTOR, Science Mag, ERIC, and so on. Should I use only credible sources for my paper? Yes, of course. Academic writing requires you to use credible sources only. What are the benefits of credible sources? The benefit of using credible sources is a having a legitimate academic paper based on real references supporting your arguments which will ultimately translate into academic prestige. Now, I will continue the discussion on how to gather data for thesis in Capstone Project. The next one will be the collecting empirical data. In order to successfully gather empirical data, you have to choose first what type of data you want as an outcome. There are essentially two options. And maybe all of you are always heard the word qualitative or quantitative data. Many people mistake one term with the other. So take a look at the following uh, articles no, that shines a light on the difference between qualitative and quantitative research to avoid this confusion. Boiled down, qualitative data means words and quantitative means numbers. Again, 
Qualitative data means words. And quantitative data means numbers. Whichever one adapts best to your research will define the type of methodology to carry out so choose, so choose wisely. I have here, I hope that you can see this one, a data type no, for qualitative and quantitative. So at what, as what we have here, we have a data type, for example, is qualitative. What is it? No. So then the methodology. For example, for qualitative data type, information that cannot be measured, it may involve multimedia material or non-textual data. This type of data claims to be detailed, nuanced, and contextual. So what will be the uh, methodology? Observations, interviews, focus, and focus groups. For quantitative, no, for quantitative, what is it? Information that can be measured and written with numbers. This type of data claims to be credible, scientific, and exact. What methodology? Okay, we need to have surveys, tests, existing databases. In the end, having in mind what type of outcome you intend and how much time you count on will lead you to choose the best type of empirical data for your research. For a detailed description of each methodology type mentioned earlier, you may read some articles on collecting data. Once you gathered enough theoretical and empirical data, you will need to start writing. But before the actual writing part, you have to structure your thesis or capstone to avoid getting lost in the sea of information. Take a look at, uh, at some guide on how to structure your capstone or thesis for some tips and tricks. This will be the frequently asked questions about gathering data for your thesis or capstone project. What type of data should I collect for my thesis or capstone? The key to knowing what type of data you have collect for your thesis is knowing in advance the type of outcome you intend to have and the amount of time you count with. Another FAQ, how do I collect theoretical data for my thesis? Again, some obvious sources of theoretical material are journals, libraries, and online databases like Google Scholar, ERIC, or Scopus, or take a look at the some top list of academic search engines. You can also search for thesis on your topic or read content sharing platforms like Medium, ISA, ISUU, and or SlideShare. How do I collect empirical data for my thesis? To gather empirical data, you have to choose first what type of data you want. There are two options again, qualitative and quantitative data. You can gather data through observation, interviews, focus groups, or with surveys, tests, and existing databases. What is qualitative data again? Qualitative Qualitative data means words, information that cannot be measured, it may involve multimedia material or non-textual data, and this type of data claims to be detailed, nuanced, and contextual. And how about the quantitative data? Quantitative data means numbers, information that can be measured and written with numbers. This type of data claims to be credible, scientific, and exact. And that is for today. That is for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you will learn something from my presentation, my video presentation. Thank you, and don't forget to subscribe. God bless everyone. Good luck and enjoy Capstone and Thesis Writing.